my belief that when a man becomes a part of this bureau... The story, which is fiction, focuses on J. Edgar Hoover's anti-communist ideology as early as 1919 and his quest to uproot communism in America no matter the cost. He's been the most powerful man in the country. The plot spans more than 50 years, eight presidencies and three wars. It portrays Hoover as a Machiavellian figure who believes that the end justifies the means. He systematically collects information on U.S. citizens and politicians. No one is above suspicion. Do you remember that file we created on his wife? Mrs. Roosevelt. Will you make a copy for me, please? Is that legal? Sometimes you need to bend the rules a little in order to keep your country safe. Filmmaker Clint Eastwood tells VOA some parts of the film are dramatic license. But he says much about Hoover's Federal Bureau of Investigation and the power it wielded is corroborated. He was a very important figure, and obviously should be the head of the top federal Congress. And uh, he, he probably was the most powerful guy in the country. The film alleges Hoover collected information on political figures like President John F. Kennedy with wiretaps. It shows him using the transcripts as political leverage. Motivated by his fear of communism, Hoover tries to convince Attorney General Robert Kennedy to step up political surveillance of Americans. You can go now, Mr. Hoover. Yes, sir. Please leave the transcripts here with me. Yes, sir. Oh, and feel free and share them with your brother. Oh, and let him know that I have a copy of my own in safekeeping. Bullying aside, the film portrays Hoover as a public relations expert who mingled in Hollywood and exaggerated his achievements. But Eastwood also shows him as a visionary, whose forensics led to the arrest of the likes of John Dillinger, a notorious gangster of the 1930s. And the film digs into Hoover's emotional makeup. We see young J. Edgar idolizing his mother, who fuels his ambitions. I tell the whole neighborhood about you, they all know. The film addresses rumors about J. Edgar Hoover's sexual orientation. Mr. Tolson, I need someone who I can trust. I want you to be my number two man. You understand? I need you. The movie shows Hoover's deputy Clyde Tolson with the FBI head to the end. Screenwriter Dustin Lance Black tells VOA that after he wrote the screenplay for Milk about gay activist Harvey Milk, he became intrigued with Hoover. I thought it was thematically the mayor of Milk. We, I had just done this whole story about how coming out of the closet and embracing your nature could give great hope, and I wondered, what's the other side of that? Uh, and, and, and I felt we potentially could benefit from learning and, and, and creating this cautionary tale about a man who's denied love. Leonardo DiCaprio offers a daring performance. This is an incredibly important American figure to take on, and so we needed the immense amount of research that, that Lance had done beforehand, and I think he needed my interpretation of how I was going to put that up on screen. The actor likes to play controversial figures, and he might get an Oscar for this one. Well, he probably, he probably could. He's very good. He's an excellent actor. I enjoyed working with him. The rest of the cast is formidable. Judy Dench as the overpowering mother, Naomi Watts as Hoover's steadfast secretary, Helen Gandy, and Army Hammer as Clyde Tolson, balancing the frustration of unrequited love with dignity. Don't get in the car. We can walk back. Like we have lunch. We don't miss lunch, no matter what, remember? You pulled away from me. And Eastwood depicts Hoover as ruthless, but also patriotic. As for his personal life, it remains shrouded in secrecy, like much of the information he amassed. But they're going to come for it all. Your private policy, no one will ever find them. Thank you, Miss Candy. Penelope Pulu, VOA News, Washington.